Mr. Joseph says his wife's spending is sending them straight to the poorhouse. Now he's wondering if she's been sleeping in someone else's house. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Hello, everyone. You may be seated. Your Honor, the case of Joseph v. Joseph. Thank you very much, Mr. Joseph and Mrs. Joseph. Thank you very much for being here in divorce court, and thank you for trusting us with your relationship, your marriage, in fact. Uh, welcome to divorce court. This is the case of Joseph versus Joseph. This is a married couple who've been together for 25 years. They were high school sweethearts. They've been married for 14 years, and they have seven children together. The stakes could not be any higher in this situation, so we're going to treat this marriage and this relationship with a tremendous amount of respect because there are kids involved and a long-standing relationship involved. Fair enough? Yes, ma'am. I'm coming straight to you, Mr. Joseph. Why are we in divorce court today? Well, Your Honor, uh, I'm bringing Nicole here today because she's been jeopardizing the finances and her um, parenting skills well, not the skills, but her parents and style mm -hmm. is quite askew, and she questions my authority when I have the better parents and style. And then um, also, she's been showcasing some somewhat sneaky behavior, so I think that warrants a lie detector test, and I want to know what's going on. That would give me the closure I need. I already signed the papers, but I, I need to know what's going on. Mrs. Joseph, you heard your husband. What do you say, ma'am? I'm sad. It hurts me that I'm even here today. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> There's a lot at stake here, Mr. Joseph. You're gonna have to take me back to when y'all were three years old because y'all been <laughs> together since literally you were 14 and 15 years old. Am I correct? 15, 16, yes. Yes, ma'am. Tell me how you met. All right, so high school sweethearts. You know, school just started. I'm a sophomore. She's a freshman, so, you know, I was a player player back then, so clocking the hotties coming in, she was one of them. <laughs> and um, she played hard to get for a little bit, so I put some pressure on, but she finally acquiesced. We started going out. We was having a good time. Um, our favorite place to eat, which I, was, you know, our favorite place to eat, I'm not gonna say, but favorite place I to wanna eat. know. <laughs> it, so we used to go to this place in Boston, Mass, called Top of the Hub, which mm -hmm. is way up in the 50th, second floor in the skyscraper, so you got the view and everything, and, um... And you 16, playing like this. 16, I had rented the limo and everything on the, um, anniversary. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't playing, I wasn't playing. We, you see it work, we still here, <laughs> here today. Seven kids, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I proposed at IHOP, though. Uh -huh. She said we was at IHOP. I didn't have no plan, I had the ring, but I have no plan or anything. That right there impresses me more than Top of the Heat yeah, or whatever the heck it's called, yeah, because yeah, IHOP, yeah. if you can get those real good pancakes, yeah. right? For sure, for sure. That's what I'm talking about. 25 years after you started dating, 14 years after you got married. Right, right. And you are seven children in. Yep. Yes, ma'am. But I understand this family has gone through some ups and some downs. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Joseph, one of those horrible downs was a house fire. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Why don't you tell me about that? So, um, I had an overnight assignment at work that night. And, um, regular night, get a phone call from Nicole around 3 a.m. Babe, the house is on fire. I'm outside with the fire department. I'm naked. And the kids, in the, like, they, they didn't have any clothes, um, clothes on, just like night clothes and she had on a robe. So um, they keep him warm in the car. The furnace exploded oh. right across from um, my two toddler son's bedroom. Blew the whole wall out. Yeah. Fortunately, she got them out before the explosion, but there was fire the coming out. The second explosion. Out the, out, yeah, the second, the, the first explosion what, is what alerted her when she was in the bathroom. Right, and so I came out when I heard that first explosion. At the time, I thought it was a gunshot. I, I said, did somebody break in? I was really nervous. Again, I was alone just with the children. Um, so when I came out the bathroom, I was conscious of, you know, if, oh if it was an, an intruder. Um, yes, those are the pictures that we submitted. Um, again, three in the morning, so everybody's asleep. Um, like he said, it was coming from the furnace right across from... Were the all the children home with you? Yes, ma'am. Two weren't. The oh. oldest wasn't because she's in college, and then um, the... another son that was at a gathering, a party. 
And this was just five months ago, and I have a six-month-old. So the baby baby was there? Yes, ma'am. So yeah. she was already born, and I had to pass the, the furnace right. to get... OK, so the fire exploded out the, the linen closet, and it was trapping um, the, the boy's room, their door. It was blow-torching their so bedroom fire. door. So um, I, I screamed, and the two oldest children came out into the hallway. So now we're separated from the fire. Um, the two oldest and I are on one side, and the fire and the, the toddlers and the baby are on the other side. Um, I told the two children to stand by the door, that I was going to make my way through the fire to get the children out, and we were going to, you know, escape. Um, the fire retracted back into the, to the, to the closet. It made a way that I was able to open the door, get the boys out of their room. I passed them on to the, to the other children, and then I passed the furnace with the flames. I can feel the heat. I grabbed the newborn. Um, I, we had to pass the furnace again, and in my mind, I'm like, it's going to explode because it's, in a, it's a furnace. It's already on fire. The whole closet was on fire. Um, I, but we made it out. By the time we made it to the door, we heard another explosion. The walls shook everything, um, and we flew down the stairs, and we were able to get out of the house. You and five children. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Bravo, baby. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. She doesn't consult me before she makes major purchases, which is a problem. It, it, what do you mean when you say a major pur purchase? Well, she she bought a she wanted to buy a pool in the in the summer. She bought a above ground pool. A swimming pool. Right. I, that is a huge purchase. So, <laughs> without consulting me, though. We had just bought this place. It was missing a pool. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Things were a little bit rocky before the fire, but since then it really um, took had a tumultuous effect on. Mr. Joseph, I would think that that would bring you together very, very it, close. It, why? Why? It, how did it tear you apart? It did, because you know, all the, all the emotions. But at the same time, we were displaced. So yeah. she was in a hotel there, and then I was working like overtime to try to rebuild the finances so that we could move move past it. Your family needed something other than just financially rebuilding. That's what I'm thinking about. But like I was saying, like, she's messing up the money. Like, there's no... I don't, to me, as much as I have to work, there's no... You have to give me a real example okay, of financial problems. So, she doesn't consult me before she makes major purchases, which is a problem. It, it, what it, do you oh, mean when you say a major pur purchase? Well, she, she bought a... She wanted to buy a pool in the, in the summer. She bought a above-ground pool. A swimming pool? Right. I, that is a huge purchase. So, <laughs> I didn't have a problem with the, her getting the pool, but she never consulted me. So I, I, I have the foresight, like, okay, the pool's gonna need maintenance. You just, uh -huh. just fill it Before with you even get there, what in the world would make you buy a whole swimming pool without talking to your husband about it? Let's just start there. So I didn't see anything wrong with it, Your Honor. We enjoy outside all the time. We had just bought this place. It was missing a pool. I didn't see anything wrong with it. But why? Did you then... not see anything wrong with sitting down next to your husband, <laughs> who is busting his butt trying to make sure that you all rebuild your finances before you make a major purchase? I know a pool costs at least several thousand dollars. So that was the issue. It was my money. So I felt I worked for it, even though, I mean, it was my credit card psst, that I used. Excuse me. Psst, psst, psst. Y'all been together 25 years. Y'all been married 14 years. It's y'all's money. And trust and believe, if you came before me in a court of law, that's what you'd be saying, because you'd want him to be paying alimony and child support. You'd say, that's our money, because I was there with him as he was building that bank yes, account. So you can't pull the it's my money card when it's convenient. Oh. You hear me, Ms. Joseph? Your Honor. I, I am attentive and I communicate. She doesn't communicate. Yeah. I get a call from her. Oh, I, we need to talk. So I'm like, well, we need to talk. Um, you know, when you get home. So I'm like, tell me now. No, I can't tell you. So I'm thinking she's gonna say, oh, I cheated on you or something like, you know? I come home. Oh, you might want to sit down. Okay. <laughs> so I sit down. I'm, sit down. One, two, three credit cards that she opened up behind my back. And you didn't know anything that's... about it? Nope. And they're all maxed out. Do you agree that those decisions that you made really did place yet another burden on yes. your family? Hindsight, absolutely. 
As soon as I walk in the house, there's a kid jumping around on the couch, and then I'm like, what's going on? Oh, that just happened. Oh, he just started doing that. But that's oh. true. So I said, I'm like, it's I'm gonna start calling you Justine, because every time I come in the house, they, they just started doing that. It just happened. Oh, you correct, he just started doing that. Yep, okay, Justine, thank you. I want to hear about this parenting style issue. Give me an example of what's been going on. So, um, I, one of the rules is the cell phones, like, the, limit the use to what's necessary. I don't want them to have them when they come home from school because they have work to do. She you agree with that, Ms. Joseph, that there was a cell phone rule? Yes, yes. you are. Yeah, in a certain time before bed. Like, it's almost time when they need to get in the shower, get, you know, get ready for bed. What's supposed to happen to the cell phones? She's supposed to sequester them and put okay. them, you know, put them away, keep them either in the bedroom or the basket that we have. Okay. And, and, uh... Charge them up for the next day, let it keep exactly, going. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you agree that that was the family rule? Yes. What happened? So, I come home, um, one evening, and everybody should be in bed asleep, and I walk past one of the bedrooms, beep, boop, 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 boop. It's okay. <laughs> Go in the room, my son's under the covers, <gasps> With the, with the phone. How old is your son? 13. It's just overwhelming. Okay. Baby, four-year-old, six-year-old, and through the whole day. I, I take care of the house from top to bottom. I'm on top of the kids with their homework. I think by the end of the night, it's overwhelming. I'm ready to just... I risk my life every day. I generate the income that she gets to enjoy. We I both have our, our trials. You know, I had to start calling her Justine because... Anytime I, I'll come in the house, it's like when the, when the cat's away, the, the mice will play, right? As soon as I walk in the house, there's a kid jumping around on the couch, and then I'm like, what's going on? Oh, that just happened. Oh, he just started doing that. But that's oh. true. So I said, I'm like, it's I'm gonna start calling you Justine, because every time I come in the house, they, they just started doing that. It just happened. Oh, you correct, he just started doing that. Yep, okay, Justine, thank you. Okay, so the two of you, very clearly, there's one thing that I'm missing in this whole conversation is mutual respect for the roles that you play in the relationship. Mutual respect. I agree, 100%. I'm willing to take accountability for everything that he stated with the finances, um, sometimes, again, with the parents and style, all of that. Um, but I, I'm not sneaky. I, I'm gonna... That doesn't sit well with me. He can say... The communication. What happened the night you went out with the girls and then okay, you didn't come Fine. I, I go out. I, again, I don't... I barely go out. And the girls, this is family members. I went out with family members, um, and I had too much to drink that I wasn't able to make it home. So... Did you call? I did not. They called. But somebody let somebody him know. Somebody let him know. They... Um, and I, Aaron, I think he even spoke to my mother, because that's where I ended up. Um, so she told him, she's here, I have her, she's safe. So they communicated that. They... I don't know why he doesn't believe my mother. I don't know what, what that's Not, about. Okay, well, but... what, how did you communicate? Like, the next day, she goes so, to work okay, from right. there. The... She texts me. I'm, I'm okay, I'm going to work. She, I, 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 don't you think I want to hear your voice? I want to... Well, that's want... true, but I had to be at work early in the morning. So I was, I was thinking of that. You did express that you didn't sleep. But again, I did. I, and I, after you expressed that, I, I said that I understood. Again, this is a lack of communication and a lack of respect for the roles that you both play. Yeah. Okay? This is what I'm talking about. I need to find out if we can build on this foundation that you all have so beautifully built. Okay? Yes, Your Honor. The first thing we're going to do is establish whether or not there's trust. Yes. Factually, how's that? I'm ready. Yeah. Let's ask the polygraph expert to join us right now. We need to put some of this Sir. to bed so we even know if we have a place to move on. Okay? Okay. Mr. Yarbrough, welcome. Good day, Your Honor. Please uh, introduce yourself for the court. Absolutely. My name is John Yarbrough. I'm a certified polygraph examiner. I'm a member of the American Polygraph Association. I've done hundreds of polygraphs for law enforcement and other public safety agencies in the state, mm. as well as professional and private polygraphs. And I find you to be an expert for the purposes of this court and conducting polygraph examinations. Mrs. Joseph willingly submitted to a polygraph examination performed by you. Yes, ma'am. Let's start. Question one. Ms. Yarbrough, we asked Mrs. Joseph, the time you stayed out all night and texted your husband from work the next morning, did you have sexual contact with anyone? That is correct. And what was Mrs. Joseph's answer? 
Mrs. Joseph answered no. And what did the test results indicate? The polygraph exam results indicated no deception indicated to that question. Mrs. Joseph told the truth. Correct. 25 years of relationship, 14 years of marriage. Mr. Yarbrough, we asked Mrs. Joseph, since the beginning of your, your marriage in 2010, have you had sexual contact with anyone besides him? Am I correct? That is correct, Your Honor. What was Mrs. Joseph's answer? Mrs. Joseph answered no. And what did the test results indicate? The polygraph examination results revealed no deception indicated to that question. I told you. Uh, I don't know why you would. Just... Mr. Yarborough, Gustin. I thank you so very much for your service to this court and to this couple. Thank you, Your Honor. You're very welcome. Mr. Joseph, if you don't turn to your wife and apologize to her right now, right now, this jury and I are going to have a major problem with you, right now. Nicole, I apologize. Uh, it was pathetic from the bottom of my heart that, um, that I, you know, I apologize that I even thought that you might have some um, deceitful um, inclinations. I truly apologize, and I, I'd like you to forgive me for thinking that way. I'll try my best not to um, have those type of thoughts ever again. Okay, I forgive you, but you hurt me. Cause that was a, lo a lot of pressure. Excuse me, Corey. You don't get to comfort this man's wife. You comfort your own wife, Mr. Joseph. Go over there and stand next to your wife. You can hand her tissues. Thank you. Get away from that man's wife, Corey. <laughs> oh, sorry. Stand there next to your wife, Mr. Joseph. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. I apologize for that. Thank you. I'd like to offer you marriage counseling in your hometown. I don't want you to have to travel anywhere. I want to make it as convenient as possible. So we've been in contact with Quintessential Wellness Solutions Therapy Practice. It handles family and couples counseling who deal with stress, anxiety, PTSD, and depression, all of which could have come out of that tragic fire that you all dealt with and you never dealt with. And um, you have those divorce papers there in your hands? Yes. I need uh, to see what you're about to do with them. If I may, I'm going to just... You have a very good woman. You have a very good man. Thank you. Thank you. The fact that you found each other all those years ago and you've come through the fire lets me know that you can begin your journey together for a healthier and happier marriage, but you can only do it together. This court has ordered family therapy. I want this family to get that family therapy. More Thank importantly, you. I'd like to get the announcement of the next baby, because you know y'all can't keep your hands <laughs> off each other. That's my verdict. Sorry. I'm really sorry, baby. It really made me sad. I'm sorry about that. But I know that we can get through it. Yeah. You That's might. what I want. Well. We've been through a lot. I love you.